Panama City Beach, Florida, known for its gorgeous sugar sand beaches and affordable coastal living. But is Panama City Beach a good place to live in 2023? What's up guys? It's your favorite Florida realtor, Eric Lighton. Emerald Coast Abode is the brand. I'm brokered by Real. I cover from Panama City Beach to Destin in this beautiful Northwest Florida coastal market. Part-time gopher at What's Up Beach Vacation Rentals covering Panama City Beach and 30A. And today we're gonna answer the question, is Panama City Beach a good place to live in 2023? So there are some things that are common knowledge about Panama City Beach. First being that it's physically beautiful. The beaches in Northwest Florida, from Panama City Beach all the way to Navarre Beach in Pensacola, are pristine, beautiful, powder white sand. So another common known fact about Panama City Beach, it has made many top 10 lists and being one of the more affordable coastal markets in Florida, and also having a very productive short-term rental market. It's been marketed as a beach destination for decades. So the marketing machine is well intact. Another well-known fact is that Panama City Beach has been known as a spring break destination where collegiates can go and party. Well, things have kind of changed a little bit in recent years. In fact, the city has banned drinking on the beach in the month of March. PCB has become more of a year-round destination for tourists. Well, let's explore some pros and cons. Okay, so there are a few different ways that people live in PCB. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's retirees that live here for part of the year or stay six months at a time. There's people that own condos for investments that will come periodically throughout the year during vacancies. So they're here some of the time. And then there's folks like me that just decide to hang out here all year round. So there are a couple different flavors of ownership. So this kind of ties into my first pro of Panama City Beach of living here is that it's very diverse in terms of the different types of properties available. There's a very healthy luxury market with a lot of condos and golf front homes. And then there's a somewhat affordable primary home market. Panama City Beach has something for every buyer out there. And it's a very diverse market with high rise zoning and affordable single family residences. Now your low density single family residence on the beach are gonna be west of Celadon and on the east end is gonna be south of Grand Lagoon. And then anything north of 98 is gonna be predominantly residential. Those geographic areas are going to be ideal for somebody that's wanting to live here year round, be away from the noise by the beach. Now, for the short-term rental investor, those high-density condos provide much more inventory than other areas of the beach. We have condos that span 25 stories. That aids in the inventory and the affordability of the beach, which makes Panama City Beach rather unique in Northwest Florida. And the fact that the rental market is so mature, it's been around for decades, well-publicized destination and STR is fairly friendly. It's easy to get a short-term rental license. There's an eclectic mix of condos that produce and is investor friendly. Mature rental market, check. Producing vacation rentals, check. High density and diverse inventory, check. A lot of things going for investors and a good amount of space for long-term residents. Panama City Beach's sold price for listings is 5% less than the average sold price throughout the state of Florida. All right, we're on to pro number two, the beautiful and accessible beaches of PCB. The beaches in Northwest Florida are pristine. It's well known. The beaches of PCB are just as luxurious as Destin, 30A, and any other beach in Northwest Florida. In fact, PCB is closer to the source of that sugar white sand. That source being the Apalachicola River, and the river brings quartz deposits from the Appalachian Mountains. Because of the fine quartz sand, our water clarity is off the charts here. You'll actually see the water become a tint of aquamarine or emerald hue. And what that is, is algae blooming in the water. But fear not. Don't worry, it's good for you. 
So another awesome thing about the beaches and PCB is that compared to most other markets in Northwest Florida, they have a tremendous amount of public beach accesses. So if you're staying or perhaps you purchased a property that isn't necessarily directly on the beach, there is a very good chance that you have a public beach access in direct walking distance of the property. Enough sugar coating, let's just jump right into con one, and that's gonna be traffic during high season. One of the pros was that we have high density condos. There's a lot of people that come to the beach during peak season in PCB. Our population during off season is 18K. During high months like June and July, the population swells to over 100,000. So around those large condos around Pier Park on Highway 98 traffic tends to get really backed up. Front Beach Road is moving slow. South Thomas and Thomas Drive it's just moving real slow across the board. So you're going to have to plan your commute accordingly. To go back to the, the beginning where I spoke about, hey, PCB is known as a spring break destination. Not really the case anymore. People still come to the beach to cut loose during that time. Things definitely happen. Our local first responders are definitely taxed during high season. Um, there's people swimming, getting themselves in bad positions, drinking alcohol, um, doing things like that. So expect those touristy things that you would see throughout the coastal areas in Florida. If you're more of a rural person, there's definitely a place for you in North Bay County and you still wanna to be to the beach, but if you wanna be right on the beach, you're gonna to have to deal with the traffic. Con number two is gonna sound really funny coming from a guy from Buffalo, New York, but con number two is the weather here. It gets hot and humid during summer months here in Northwest Florida in Panama City Beach. We have a tropical climate. That climate lends itself to some pretty intense storms and we are susceptible to hurricanes during warmer months. In fact, in 2018, we did have Hurricane Michael come through. It didn't directly affect Panama City Beach, but we definitely felt some effects of that from the wind uh, that was more out east, Port St. Joe, Mexico Beach, and had a lot of issues with that storm. So one of the considerations with the weather and the weather risk of hurricanes is insurance considerations. A lot of the condos have to have a master flood and storm policy. Rising rates affect the condo dues, and it's also can be really expensive for homeowners to insure property here. And while our taxes are low, our insurance tends to be a little higher because of that. Northwest Florida is quite a bit cooler than South Florida. So if you were hoping for like a real nice warm winter in moving here, I think you'll be a little disappointed. I love the winters here, but they can get cold, especially overnight. We can get under freezing. Now this doesn't happen every day, but just something to think about. So my conclusion, the occasional tourist craziness with traffic and things happening on the beach, and of course being prepared in inclement weather situations occasionally throughout the year. Pros for living in Panama City Beach in 2023 far outweigh the cons. So one of the pros that I didn't really talk about yet is the culture here and kind of the demeanor of the locals. I think there's negative ions and vitamin D with all the sunshine, but people are in a really good mood here. The locals and just people that live around here are super friendly. If you're going in the store, picking up some groceries, looking in the wine aisle, people will strike up conversations with you. They'll hold doors for you. Uh, overall, this is one of the most friendly places I've been to. Now, granted, on the beach when there's a bunch of people in town, it can get a little hectic. The rest of the year, when it's a little calmer and the people that are around all year, you kind of see the true color of the local culture. Very helpful, very accommodating, and kind. And I like that very much. Ever since landing here in 2001, I decided to make this place my home and have lived here ever since. I raised my family here. Um, the schools around here locally are very good. They also have accessible college. They have Gulf Coast Community College and then FSU has a satellite school in Panama City. So there's a lot to offer in terms of primary residence. I think the pros far outweigh the cons. I like the affordability of this coastal market. There's also investment opportunity here. So if you have any questions about 
purchasing in Panama City Beach. Again, my name is Eric Light and I'm a real estate agent. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. All my contact info is in the description below. I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm trying to make more content in between helping people out. It's a battle, but I'm trying to be consistent with it this year. If you liked what you see, please subscribe to my channel, like, and leave a comment with what are some of your favorite things in Panama City Beach. And I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time.